Hello, everybody. My name is Paul Gamp. I'm the Chief Technology Officer for PCCW Global. It's great to be here today, and I'm really excited to talk about the digital transformation journey we're having here at PCCW Global, and importantly, the Console Connect platform that was acquired by PCCW Global just over three years ago. So the reason MEF plays such an important role in the evolution of our digital platform is because what we are encountering is the need for international carriers to provide connectivity beyond the reach of their physical networks as we begin to offer on-demand services to our customers that are operating outside their traditional domain. So what is it that our enterprise customers are asking for? Our enterprise customers are asking for the ability to do traditional forms of connectivity, connecting one data center to another data center, uh, connecting a branch office to a head office, work that the international telecommunications industry has been doing for at least 20 years. But now what we're seeing the enterprise customers want to do is connect to anybody on a platform, whether it be a supply chain partner, an upstream partner, a downstream partner, an east-west partner. They want to be able to connect to SaaS applications, to ERPs that are hosted in the cloud. They want to have this ubiquity of connectivity, and they want it to be done privately and securely as they have done with traditional MPLS networks. We see a substantial amount of workloads now moving to the cloud, whether that be AWS, Azure, Google, Alibaba, Tencent, Oracle, Salesforce, and others. How do we provide that connectivity to the enterprise? And how do we provide connectivity to the general internet, the traditional connectivity services that we provided in the past? So a lot of the reason that we need to establish a relationship with the evolution of MET standards is because um, we're being presented with this problem because our customers are now asking us to deliver these sorts of services on demand, and we need to find ways to deliver them. And in many cases, the connectivity that they require is beyond the reach of the network that we're operating. But importantly, our journey began not with a technology evolution, not with the evolution of a digital platform, but with the evolution of PCCW Global as an organization. Back in 2018, shortly after the acquisition of Console Connect by PCCW Global, we realized that to be able to be part of the journey of digital transformation for our enterprise customers, we needed to embrace a digital transformation ourselves. And in the middle of 2018, as a senior management team, we made a collective decision to adopt the scaled agile framework to help guide that transformation. It began with the data and IoT team. We identified the way that we deliver value to organizations. We identified all of our colleagues that are associated with the way we deliver value. And we then identified the systems that are supporting those operational value stream. Once we'd identified those systems, we then identified all of the development community that supported those systems, and we formed them into teams of agile teams. We began in 2018 with the launch of our data and IoT, what we refer to as an agile release train or a team of agile teams, followed shortly after by uh, corporate services, our traditional BSS, OSS organization that support those systems. And we then extended beyond that into other applications that we develop around mobility and voice. We identified our colleagues throughout Europe that develop systems associated with our mobility and voice business. And then we extended that even further and into our support organization, our delivery and support. Throughout the course of 2018 and 2019, we identified each of these agile release trains and we launched them and we educated them and trained them in agile ways of working. The implementation that I've just described here is uh, following the scaled agile framework implementation roadmap. And I really want to and highlight that the ability for us to deliver digital services on demand to our customer base was predicated by our ability to identify and launch these agile release trains. It was really a core part of this transformation to deliver value to our enterprise customers that are undergoing a transformation. We needed to undergo this transformation ourselves. It's enabled us to do many things, particularly to begin to focus and operate like an agile organization and to understand what sort of challenges our customers are facing in their agile transformation. As they may begin to move workloads to the cloud, so has PCCW Global. As we've begun to deliver, as our enterprise users have begun to deliver value to their customers 
via their supply chain and via their partnerships. So too has Console Connect by PCCW Global played an important part of our evolution in establishing that agile mindset in the organization. So how are we solving the problem? Uh, we're solving the problem through the MEF Lifecycle Orchestration Sonata Interface, part of the MEF 55 uh, in Interface Reference Points uh, implementation. Sonata has played a really strategic role for PCCW Global because it is that business to business interface reference point. It manages the service, the operation, the commercial interactions between two network providers. The reason that's important to us, uh, despite the reach of the PCCW global network, there are often endpoints or last miles that our enterprise customers want to get to that are not part of our network. Therefore, we need to have these relationships with third party providers. And traditionally, as an industry, we would have built these network to network interfaces through manual managed services. We would establish these NNIs and we would manually provision services, coordinating for the different VLANs that we would hand off customers to. The reason that the Sonata interface is so important to us is that the customer demand is no longer for a fixed term 12 month contract. It's now for two to three days. Um, they may want to have an ability to connect from Singapore to Dubai. They may want to have the ability to connect from Sydney to the uh, Google Cloud Platform in London for 24 hours. And sometimes that demand from our customer base requires us to coordinate with our third party providers. And we need to move that from a manual email phone call conversation around provisioning into a fully integrated API. And so shortly after I joined PCCW Global, I took the opportunity to investigate all of the various uh, standards organizations associated with the telecommunications industry. And MEF really stood out as that not-for-profit industry leader establishing a network of cloud and technology providers who develop and certify API standards which empower this enterprise digital transformation. So MEF has been really strategic for us in terms of establishing a strategy for us around our APIs that we deliver to our, uh, to our customers, but most importantly to the API strategy that we develop with our partners. So what have we been able to achieve? And thankfully, through the award ceremonies and the ability to structure proof of concept demonstrations with a partnership with a number of other carriers, including Colt Technology Services, Sparkle, Tata Communications, Acedian, Armidus, and Clear Blockchain Technologies, we've been able to prove this hypothesis that the Sonata API and the reference implementation is able to deliver the true end-to-end -end scenario that we just described. So yeah, we were made an award-winning MEF3 proof of concept demonstration that was recognized in 2019, where we were able to achieve exactly that. So from a UNI, from a customer endpoint, we were able to connect through the Tata network, through the Sparkle network, and onwards into PCCW Global or into Colt. I think the key thing here is that where we saw MEF adding value to us was as a body that were able to establish a collaborative community of fellow telecommunications providers that had a reference architecture that we all agreed and aligned to, and that delivered a technical outcome that we were then able to prove the hypothesis that this API was able to achieve the outcome that our enterprise customers were bringing to us. So this dynamic connectivity was really important in terms of me having assurance that we were on the right track with, uh, with our relationship with MEF. And that east-west connectivity, where we were able to deliver to the enterprise connection from one location through a partner onto another location that was um, off net for us, was really strategic in terms of a strategy of how we're going to provide this um, high-speed underlay. Because I think from the enterprise perspective, they're not really focused on what the individual carrier relationships are. They see this private connectivity as a high-speed underlay that they need to orchestrate, just as they orchestrate virtual machine infrastructure in a public cloud. The key thing for me, however, was acknowledging that we were at the beginning of a transformation in the way that connectivity services were developed. And the reason that that transformation is so strategic is because as we completed this proof of concept in 2019, 
one of the things that we realised is if connectivity implementation was going to occur and not just at a annual boundary or perhaps a monthly boundary, but that we're going to see connectivity being delivered on a hourly basis, perhaps even down to the minute or the second, what does that mean for knock-on effects? So we can imagine the configure, price, quote, provision and service automation lifecycle as being something that we can deliver via an API. And that timeline looks realistic and achievable from a technical perspective. But what this proof of concept really highlighted for us was that that's not sufficient. It's going to create a, a commercial impact. So if we're delivering a service on an hourly basis or even down to a per second basis, as an industry, how are we going to settle for that? And importantly, not just settle with our end enterprise customer, but settle with the partners who may be part of that value chain. In the instance that we demonstrated here, when we went from Tata to Sparkle to PCCW Global, that's a tripartite relationship with an end user. How are we going to effectively settle for each of our networks contributing part of the value of that connectivity solution? So that's really where we understood that there needed to be some form of technology associated with the commercial enablement. And MEF played a really strategic role for us in, in identifying the technical attributes of the EVC, you know, what are the parameters of the connection that we deliver for this private secure um, underlay. But it also gave us a forum to talk about how we're going to settle for this commercially. And once you have a tri-party relationship, the natural evolution at this point, uh, certainly from my perspective and, and with Sparkle and Tata and, and Colt, was to begin to look at other alternatives around settlement and automation. And so part of the proof of concept that we demonstrated was with not just the technical dynamic connectivity, but also in the commercial enablement. And at that point, we adopted blockchain, so a distributed ledger technology, and, and using Clear as our blockchain technology provider, we were able to demonstrate in this particular proof of, point, uh, proof of concept that distributed ledger technology was the key to enabling the commercial attributes and the commercial settlement. And it's very heartening to see that MEF is beginning to do research into the area that we can see around blockchain and settlement. One of the things that we've learned is that uh, it's since this proof of concept in 2019, we also worked with another partner where we're able to en enable full lifecycle management. So the actual service that we delivered was instantiated as a smart contract on a blockchain and the service start, the service delivery and the service end were all attributes that we were able to instantiate on a blockchain and then go through all the way through to settlement on that transaction. So this ability for MEF to provide a forum where we could uh, conduct a proof of concept, find a community of peers, uh, coalesce around a strategy for implementation and then demonstrate and prove the hypothesis has proven to be very strategic for us. And in 2020, we continued on that vision. So much so that one of the, as I mentioned earlier on about the importance of this agile transformation internally, we instantiated the beginning of 2020 and a dedicated agile release train purely focusing on this blockchain investment at PCCW Global. And that's where we continue to invest in our partnership. So what are the, some of the lessons that we've learned as we've gone through this process? Um, we've learned that the APIs to automate existing inter-service provider processes are, are nice to have. Automating the existing configure price quote process certainly delivered lots of efficiencies. And we see that in our relationship with other carriers as we've continued to uh, look at different proof of concepts and different opportunities to instantiate uh, or tokenize assets, service records, for example. We have a partnership underway with another carrier where we're tokenizing a service attribute and putting it on a blockchain and managing this part of the life cycle, the configuration pro price and quote part of the life cycle. And so that's great. We're definitely getting operational efficiencies, our data integrity is improving, and we can see the benefits of the tokenization of a service asset. But what it didn't do was deliver us innovation. And that's really important because taking a legacy process and automating it doesn't really map to the way that the enterprise is experiencing its digital transformation. As, as the enterprise move mission critical workloads to the cloud, and they, as they discover that the public internet 
where you have limited to no control over the path from source to destination, and you have limited to no ability to manage the quality of service of that connection, this is how the enterprise are discovering the demand for private connectivity, where you have the ability to control path from source to destination, and you have the ability to control quality of service, to allocate fixed bandwidth and fixed quality of service to that connectivity from the headquarters to a private application hosted in a public cloud. So that is where innovation's occurring. And the APIs that automate new inter-service provider processes are the must-have. So really, that's what we learned as we went through these proof of concepts, focusing not just on the automation of existing processes, but automation on new services. So APIs that automate these new services have a very different profile when you begin to think of the use case you're trying to solve for the enterprise, as opposed to the solving the existing use case of the way we've delivered value in the past. So attributes around on demand. So the goal for the enterprise is provisioning. The goal for the enterprise is not quoting, it's not pricing. They just want to have that connectivity to that virtual private cloud for 24 hours and they want it now. And they want to implement it in a script. They want to be able to call an API at endpoint at a service provider and say, I want connectivity from Sydney to Singapore for 24 hours and I want 500 megabits of bandwidth allocated to my VPC in AWS and I want one gig allocated to my VPC in Google in Taiwan. So they're thinking about it in terms of use cases that they're trying to solve and all of it's around on-demand connectivity. At times, certainly what we've experienced is these network as a service platforms, as, or as we prefer to call it at Console Connect by PCCW Global, these software defined interconnection platforms are at times evolving faster than the standards. And that's certainly happened in, the, in other industries in the past, and that's not surprising. I think that's a good thing. Um, but the important role that MEF plays here is being able to take these fields of innovation, you know, whether it's the Console Connect platform or other software defined interconnection platforms, but bring them together in terms of what have these partnership communities learned and how are we going to bring that learning together into a standard that we can all coalesce around. Finally, in order to automate managed data services, we need to adopt standards that have both a standardized data model, but importantly, a standardized information model and a processing around it. So that's what we've learned, is that these automation around new inter-service provider processes are, are the must-have as opposed to the nice-to-have. And finally, as I mentioned earlier, automation of commercial is just as important as automation of service delivery. And we think that the dis adoption of distributed ledger is a natural extension. We see here already, not just through proof of concept that we did in 2019, but in terms of production deployments that we're focused on in 2021, that there's a substantial amount of value in the inter-service provider capability by focusing on this um, uh, distributed ledger technology to maintain state and awareness of services as we tokenize them and put them onto a distributed ledger. So in the future, I see that for the enterprise and for, and for um, service providers, that the cost of this technology adoption could become quite substantial. If as a chief technology officer of an international telecommunications provider, or as a technology company that we call ourselves today, if I need to adopt a different API interface to integrate with my partners in Europe, then I need to um, adopt a different API standard to integrate with my partners in North America. How am I going to provide a consistent ex user experience for my customers? So the ability to adopt and coalesce around a standard become very critical to me from a cost um, from a cost perspective. I need to ensure a, a unified experience for my customers, irrespective of where they are globally. And one of the ways I can do that is by having a standards organization such as MEF play a critical role in coordinating a global community of service providers around a single standard. And we've certainly found that the development and evolution of Sonata has been key for that. And so the cost benefits of in being engaged in MEF is, is strategic because it lowers the cost of me uh, as an organization to integrate with my peers, and that improves the quality of service that I can offer to my users.
So I certainly see at some point in the future we're going to see some federation and that the, maybe there's a role for an organization to play in the federation of APIs as we in focus on the cost reduction because the connectivity services that we provide is only one of many. What if we were able to have a standardized interface around this lifecycle orchestration that wasn't just a data service? Perhaps there's an opportunity to have a federation of API services where the service attributes are somewhat agnostic and we can use something like the lifecycle orchestration reference to automate not just data services, but perhaps voice services or perhaps mobile roaming. Where I'm really excited is <clears throat> what we see the enterprise discovering the software-defined interconnection platforms is because they're evaluating the movement of a mission-critical workload into a public cloud whether that be through an agile transformation that they're doing internally, or whether it be through simple economics that they want to lower their cost of operations. They discover these software-defined interconnection platforms because they want to understand, if I move a workload to public cloud, can I connect to it privately? And often what that may mean is we've achieved that um, the point of presence. So they've found a software-defined interconnection provider and they're now really just looking to provision virtual machine infrastructure. So I think there's a real opportunity for us as an industry to begin to play a more strategic role in the digital transformation of the enterprise. We've been very focused and successful around lifecycle orchestration for data services. I think if we step back for a moment and see this as a, as a fabric of API federation for the enterprise, then maybe there's a role for us to play in the automation of virtual machine infrastructure or container infrastructure. Maybe we can be the entry point for the enterprise on that transformation journey and that they could choose to use a MEF API to launch a virtual machine at the same time that they've chosen to launch private connectivity to that virtual machine. So I think there's a real strategic um, uh, opportunity for MEF and I'm excited to continue um, on that journey with MEF and with the partners that I have in that community. It's been wonderful to have an opportunity to speak with you today. In summary, I think the key thing that I'd like to share with everyone is that this transformation journey at PCCW Global uh, began with us as an organization learning agile ways of working. And that agile way of working was as strategic to the organization and our ability to deliver value to our customers as any of the technical decisions that we made. And it's really important that I have that opportunity to express how critical the Agile transformation has been at PCCW Global to ensure that we're able to assist other organizations as they go through their digital and Agile transformation. The problem that we've been trying to solve for the enterprise is that they don't really see the services that we provide as independent. They see this large scale fabric of connectivity that's critical to their ability to achieve their transformation goals and that the MEF Sonata lifecycle orchestration uh, work, body of work has allowed us to play a role in that connectivity transformation inside the enterprise. In 2019, the ability to demonstrate and prove that hypo hypothesis was key to our decision making. Working with Tata and Sparkle and Colt gave us the confidence that we had the right uh, API specification in place and some of the lessons that we've learned is really to focus on the transformation journey in terms of must have, which is this on demand connectivity to mission critical applications, whether they be in a public cloud, whether they be delivered by a SaaS provider, and really beginning to focus on delivering a platform of connectivity between applications and infrastructure for our user base. We don't know today whether a user is going to become a consumer or a supplier of our service as we move to a platform economic model. And finally, the fact that distributed ledger, the opportunity that MEF afforded us to prove out that hypothesis has been really strategic as we focus now on uh, production deployments of distributed ledger between many of our partners. It's been wonderful to have the opportunity to share our journey with you and thank you for the opportunity.